Hey everybody, Jessica at Pretty Prints in Paper, and I'm going to be talking about migrating from February and setting up for March. If you haven't been here before, I talk about bullet journaling and creative planning, as well as some artsy things like alcohol ink and brush calligraphy, so that we can kind of unlock our own selves to create a system that is useful, unique, and yours. So stick around, I'm going to talk about the process of reflecting on your past month to set up for your next month. So let's dive in. So I'm pulling out some of the systems that I use the most in terms of planning. So I've got my bullet journal, my Moxie Life Companion Notebook, and my Passion Planner. And the first step that you'll want to take with your system is to actually look back at the last month. Don't just start diving into March as if nothing ever happened in February. Look through all of your planners and just see what are the things that you notice? How did you spend your time? Do you think that was time well spent? Did you spend time on things that you didn't like? If you use a digital calendar, this is a good time to kind of scroll back and see what kinds of things are on your calendar. I'll look back at this and each month, each week, I have these sticker sets that really highlight just some of the main anchors of the time that I spent. I'm noticing that I did a lot of things that required some facilitation and you know meetings at night teaching that always takes a lot out of me and i wonder is that too much i think i over scheduled myself a lot of things at night on this week and it doesn't leave me a lot of room for when something comes up so i think that was the main thing i loved that i got to be celebratory with lunar new year but mm, do you notice some of those same things in your own time as well two check in on your goals. So I'm using a Moxie Life companion notebook to house my goals. And sometimes you might have that at the front of your bullet journal or your planner, whatever, but take some time to look at these goals that you set and think about, did I really spend time making movement on that? If it's not, that's fine. But it's kind of up to you whether you think that that was time that you could have spent differently or you want to spend differently in the next month and some practical ways that you can actually adjust your schedule to do that. So go through and take a look at how you did. Are there the same things that are following you from week to week, the same challenges and if so, like for me, silence is one of those things that's really hard for me. What are some of the ways that I could maybe tweak, either break something down into smaller pieces to get me started, or maybe you want to slot some specific time for it or throw it out altogether. But every month is an opportunity for you to refine and reflect. And then lastly, take a look at your everyday planner and look through the actual system itself. Is it working? What friction points are you noticing? What keeps getting carried over? And see if there's anything in the actual setup that you might want to keep, toss, refine. For me, I am really loving this log. I am maybe on this because I have a different thing that I journal in and that maybe that's where I'm going to keep that. And I also liked this addition that I added to my spreads this month, along with these star days for my habits. So I really liked that. I'm going to tweak this. I need more space for these projects. And something that I noticed, right, is that the second half I wasn't using. Where are the other spreads and things in your planner, in your system that you aren't using? Why is that? Do you want to? And is there something else that you find yourself reaching for post-its or sticky notes and writing down that you could incorporate into your practice? And what I figured out this month was that I needed to go back and reference these things more often than I did in my, in my previous. So I was actually finally using these freaking bookmarks. I never used to use these. So using these has helped me kind of flip back to my monthly logs, so I'm liking using it. I'm actually filling it in, which I never used to before. And here, I am adding in some um, tasks every day by writing down, take your vitamins, do your logs, and that has helped me slowly make this a habit. I just write it in the first thing in the morning, and yeah, it, it does seem kind of redundant, but it's super helpful for me to um, actually follow through and look back. So if that's something that you need to do, maybe that's something that you can add. And I 
you know, something that I notice is sometimes I feel overwhelmed and need to like do a lot of brain dumping for all the tasks in my head, which kind of, kind of tells me that I need to step back and do some larger picture planning, getting a bigger sense of what's going on with some of these projects that I'm doing. I have started reflecting a little bit more each week more intentionally, which I think is helpful. Okay. So by looking through, you can think about what, what's working, what do you want to keep, and actively decide what you want to con Marie and ditch because it no longer sparks joy. So <laughs> doing that each week has been really helpful for me in terms of seeing what types of tasks I have been getting done, what haven't I been getting done, so that I can, you know, just tweak things every week. Without the reflection, it kind of just becomes this rote practice. At the end of this month, my friend Kat on Instagram at Books of Notes was doing a session live on Instagram um, to walk through February reflection in the frame of this kind of self-care framework where she talked about connection, learning, moving, mindfulness, giving, and self-care practice. So I think there's a lot of these questions that were really grounding for me and slowing down to think about how this month went and get honest with myself about what worked and what didn't. And so now, based on that, you can set up your next month. So changing things isn't just about changing the cute theme or the colors, even though they're really fun. What are the things structurally that you will change that will help you live either a more gracious, kind, intentional, purposeful, driven, whatever it is that you want to live life? Think about that and then get to it. Um, what kinds of things are you doing in your next month spread? I would love to know down below. So I'm going to take a break and do some reflection and come back to set up my mark. All right. So we know that I use digital calendars, Google Calendar for Life. So all my events are in there. So I don't use the monthly planner here for my events, but I do reference it and create a meal plan in here. I just like the tactile feeling of this. And the first thing I do is I follow the lazy genius method. So take a look at that. But I first look at when my busy weeks are on my digital calendar so I can make either more food or easy food during that week. And I like to use these cloth and paper sticky notes and keep it pretty flexible. I'm still kind of following the one soup, one flavor thing. I'm just too lazy to decide something different right now. So I will put it off for future Jessica to include some other things besides soup. And uh, I usually do one prep on Sundays and one prep on Thursdays. And of course can move this around if I get takeout or something like that. To be honest, as I've done this for quarantine, I keep forgetting that I could like go out to eat. So I barely even get takeout anymore, except for when I'm really, really busy. So having done that and plugging in a couple of the things that anchor my time. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to use these spaces and knowing that a lot of my planning, I'm going to try to move to my bullet journal or something else. I just decided to use this as kind of like anchoring inspiration and intention. So I really loved this quote, put that in here from one of my friend's moms and feeling a lot of imposter syndrome lately. So wanting to put this kind of anchoring March and then on the side, I just have a couple different major things that I wanted to get focused on this month and haven't really figured out what I will do here. If you have ideas, can you leave them down below? Because I need some help. <laughs> okay. For this, I just use the Simply Watercolor Co. kit and there's just enough simple pieces in here that I can add into the monthly. When I reflected on how I spent my time in the past planning, I wanted to shift over to doing something a little bit more simple and use a lot more of pens. So I decided to go with something like this where it's a lot more just floral theme, simple, and using some markers from Arteza, which I'll link down below. They work really, really great for highlighting and then the, the, there's a fine liner tip on the way end, which I love because the plastic nib holds up so much better to my handwriting than a fine liner does. So there's like, 72 different colors in the pack that I got. So I just kind of chose the ones that match and I'll be using them either all week or all month. So here I just, again, was able to 
use the highlighting for the big events and then using the fine liner and the corresponding colors I'm going to be able to add blocking off time for tasks and projects. There's a lot of things that I have to have time and time to do so writing in things like grading presents that takes me a little bit to, to get into. Blocking that off kind of mentally will kind of help make sure that I have enough time scheduled for some of my priorities. What I needed to do here is go in with some of the goals that I set in my Moxie Life Planner and make sure that the goals for movement, for silence, and things like that do end up in either my Google Calendar or into this overview of the week. In terms of these lists down here, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing some kind of either content planning and then meals on this side so that I can kind of break it down a little bit farther and use this more open space for more inspiration instead. Before, I was using this as like the weekly workspace and I think I'm going to use my bullet journal for that instead. And so based on all of those reflections and tweaks, I was able to set up my march using those same stickers because you know I love a good consistent theme it helps me line things up it really didn't take much I just had to cut them and place them which was easy and fun and I used a stencil here to add these boxes and just you know change the angle a little bit this is the list of projects that I really need to get moving on this month and the steps that I need to accomplish at some point in March and wanting to make sure that there was a dedicated space for that one of the spreads that I really liked from my February was the log. And so in the bullet journal system, people think that this monthly log means that you plan out your entire day on this one line and it's not actually. The original purpose is kind of like an afterward. You write down the things that happened that day. So I really like being able to do that and look through it. So copying that again today. And then on this side, I just decided to keep the check in with my body log and ditch the single, you know, ramblings of the day since I already do a journaling thing in my other notebook and throughout the days. I just cut that one out and kept this one. And what I'm doing here is one line for each date. And then what I'll do is dedicate this column once again for my star days, for my habits, and then I added time across the top because I wasn't doing my daily tracking of my sleep on the side of my passion planner, so I think I'm going to try and incorporate it into this. So in the background, I'm going to be using my favorite brush pen, which is the Tombow N89, the lightest color that they have, and first marking off how much sleep I got that day and then writing in whether I had a headache or experienced other kinds of symptoms or worked out that day on top of the line. And that will be kind of a nice bar chart in the background consolidated into one list. The fewer pages that I have to refer back to, the more likely it is that I will actually keep up with all of them. I am once again keeping this weekly chart. That means that I can just brain dump all the things I needed to get done at some point that week. The initial things that I'll put down in here are the intended tasks, so things that I know I need to get done. And then as other tasks come up throughout the days that don't belong in that day, but sometime that week or next week, I'll be able to add them into this place. But I'm going to try to be better about noting what I'm intending to get done slash what I need to get done versus these things that kind of come to mind or emerge throughout the time. And then lastly, you know that the core of the bullet journal system is the dailies. And I, I just, I love dailies because it really allows me to get granular. It allows me to mark down the important things of that day, not just the tasks, but also the things like things that made me laugh, the memories I want to have quotes that I stumble across and taking up as much or as little room as possible. Each morning I kind of start off or at night with these priorities and then the rest of the day fills in itself. I am trying to again keep up with monitoring my energy throughout the day to see where I rise and fall. Um, this is probably also aligned with my physical chart that I just pointed out but um, seeing where the dips go and I can better align my time with that energy. If you haven't seen my video about tracking my energy in my bullet journal, I'm going to put it up in the card so that you can check that out. But this is my setup so far. The next step, honestly, is to go back through February tasks and making sure that I'm migrating over the projects that need to be handled, the tasks that are very, very important, or the tasks that are not important, and I can just release into the world. They no longer spark joy. Thank 
thank you for your service. Um, so those are kind of the main parts of my monthly setup. There are things that you can do for a monthly reset, things like life admin, as Michelle B puts it, or you know, a financial check-in or a content creation check-in, whatever it is. This is the time and let me know in the comments what it is that you are putting into your system. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.